let's look back to a glorious September morning. Good morning, and here we have a load of foraging. Blackberries, cherry plums, damsons, sloes, hawthorn berries, elderberries, and then the recipe I'm following calls for crab apples, but this year, after last year where I had crab apples coming out of my ears and had no idea what to do with them all, apart from jelly, there's not a crab apple to be had, so I've just gone for the smallest, sharpest apples on our trees. And the recipe I'm following is for a hedgerow ketchup and it was quite a small based recipe and I thought it would be really good for using up remnants of bottles of vinegar I've got and remnants of different brown sugars. So for every pound of fruit you need to add, um, oh this is where I'm going to have a conversion moment. Right I'm back, I've double checked. For every pound of fruit this recipe calls for half a pint of vinegar. Sorry, all my, all my bottles of, of vinegar come in metric measurements, but uh, all the recipes I use tend to be in Imperial, so we'll be in a bit of a muddle. So this is a bit approximate, but I've got, I did weigh it, so I've got a pound of blackberries, pound of mixed cherry plums, pound of damsons, probably a bit more than a pound of apples, and then half a pound of elderberries, and let's say half a pound of other mixed mixed berries and so to add to all of that so one two three four five I will need to add two and a half pints of vinegar let me just go and check my math I'm putting the fruit on the stove and I'm going to add my vinegar the recipe called for apple cider vinegar but it did say you could use malt vinegar if you wanted um, actually other recipes I looked at along the same vein of this said to use white wine or red wine vinegar. I think all of which sound lovely, but I'm just going to use up the vinegars that I've got small amounts left of. So we're starting with a pint of apple cider vinegar. This is a leftover bottle of malt vinegar, so there's about half a pint of that one. And so we need one more pint of vinegar, and that's also going to be malt. And so we're also going to add to that two pints of water, which seems like rather a lot to me, but let's see how that goes. Okay, look at that. And to this I'm going to add some cinnamon bark, some star anise, some black peppercorns, some cloves and some juniper berries. And now we're going to let it come to the boil and then gently simmer until all the fruit is soft and any of the stoned fruit like the cherry plums and the damsons and the haws and the sloes have um, burst and split the skin so they're nice and soft. Um, and then you don't need to worry about taking any of the stones out because the whole mixture is going to get sieved. But you want them all to be nice and soft as possible. And now it's time for the really messy bit of sieving all the mixture through to get rid of the stones and lumps.
time to add the dark brown sugar and again I'm using up what I've got left over. It actually calls for quite a lot. So for my two and a half pounds of fruit I ended up adding one pound and 13 ounces thereabouts of sugar. A mixture of dark and light brown. And because the original recipe was for quite a small quantity it says you just need to dissolve the sugar and boil for five minutes but because of my large quantity I left it on the hot plate of the agar until everything was dissolved, caramelised and it reduced down quite a bit in quantity. And now for an even messier finish. Normally, when I've got a lot of um, liquid to, to decant, I pour it into a jug and then use the jug to pour it into the jars. Obviously I was just trying to avoid the washing up today and I did it with the ladle straight into the jars and you can see the massive true blood effect that I had, so I won't be doing that again. And there we have the final selection. Um, I haven't measured how much it made in total because they're all mismatched jars, but I'm very pleased with that. And over here, I've got two little sample pots. I find these very handy when you've got a bit left over and you want to scrape the last of it out. And it means you can give it a try. So I already have tried some. I had some with some cheese and some bread and it was very nice. And the colour, I think you'll agree, is rather wonderful. So there we are, that's hedgerow ketchup. All ready for cooked breakfasts, cheese sandwiches and anything else that it goes well with. Archie, go away! <laughs> <laughs>